Hey everybody, I want to talk to you about the congressional races, which are absolutely as important as the presidential. So let's do a little basic civics because we all learn this stuff in school. We don't always remember it. And this is a year to really apply it. So we have two, well, we have three co-equal branches of government, but the two that are particularly important right now for 2020 are Congress and the presidency. Uh, we've talked plenty about the presidential election, and I'm sure that you're checking in your own heart, your own conscience, and you're going to do the right thing for you in terms of who you vote for in the presidential primary. However, we have these what's called down ballot races. That has to do with Congress. It has to do with Congress people. It has to do with senators. Not every state, of course, given that they are six-year terms, not all of your states have senatorial races this year, but all of us have congressional races. Abraham Lincoln once said that there's not that much evil any government can perpetrate as long as the people remain vigilant. He was referring there to the fact that because every congressperson runs every two years, theoretically, they can all be replaced. But because of gerrymandering and so forth, it can be very, very rough. Now, this is the deal. Many have commented, obviously, about my race for the presidency. Hey, it seems like somebody kind of wanted you out of there. Duh, right? They do that same thing when it comes to the congressional races. There are forces. There are forces within the Republican Party. There are forces within the Democratic Party. There are forces within the media, all of that, that have to do with the suppression of some of the candidates, particularly progressive candidates, that are taking the most humanitarian stances. And those who are standing for the most humanitarian causes, not incidentally, often represent people who do not have as much money backing them. So I want to do everything that I can to support people now running for congressional races who, just as I said when I got out of my own campaign, I said that I hope that some of the ideas that we stood for will find seed in other campaigns. Many of the things that I stood for, it's not like I'm the only person standing for these things or has been standing for these things, but we want to really support the people who are. These primaries are important. It's not enough to say, okay, well, whoever the Democrat is, I'll vote for them, especially in these congressional races. And also, you know, when I was running, they said to me what people say to every presidential uh, candidate, which is, how are you going to get your ideas past Congress? Well, it has to do with who controls Congress. Right now, the Democrats are in control in the House. The Republicans are in control in the Senate. There is no guarantee that Democrats will keep the House. And we shouldn't accept the idea that we will not be able to take the Senate. So I have uh, certain congressional candidates whose work I have seen, I know, and I want to support in every way possible. And I hope that you will help me. Now, excuse me, because I dropped the piece of paper. There are people such as my friend Jill Carter in Maryland, Eva Putsova in Arizona, Andrew Romanoff in Colorado, J.D. Scholten in Iowa, Betsy Sweet in Maine. You know, I'll be, uh, I, I'll be doing everything that I can to support these candidates. And it's not just congressional. Some of these have to do with attorney general. Some of them have to do with governor. Some of them have to do with Senate and House. Sh uh, Shan Chowdhury in New York. And then there are other candidates in Illinois, in Texas, in Oregon, in Indiana, in Ohio, in Georgia, in Washington State, and in Montana. These are candidates who we have identified, who I, working with people that I respect uh, very much, mentors of mine such as Howie Klein, I look at these candidates, I... Um, I know what's going on here, and you know what's going on here. We have to support the people we want in power. And this is the time to do it. None of this whining and complaining that we do later. Ah, Congress doesn't stand for the people. They only stand for corporate profits. Well, if we're not really fully engaged, can we really complain? So I hope you will look at the link. And the time to do this is now. These primaries are upon us. Do what you can. $5, $10, $15. You know, somebody said to me not too long ago, what, am I supposed to send money to every candidate who's out there doing something wonderful? You know what? If you can afford it, the answer is yes. At the very least, you can look at these people's sites. If you live in their districts, if you live in their states, you can tell other people about what they're doing. They're volunteering. So please, check out the link. Do what you can. We're living in a moment of crisis, and I know that you know that. But this isn't a moment where you need to be told that. We all know what's going on. The issue is, will we 
own what's going on. Will we emotionally and psychologically inhabit the space that is necessary in order for us to be the people who address the challenge, rise to the occasion? The candidates that we're supporting here, that you see on that link, that you see on that list, they are all people who are, you know, as they say, fighting the good fight. I don't like that term. It doesn't have to be a fight. We're standing for the things that matter. Martin Luther King said, your life begins to end on the day you stop talking about things that matter. And at this point, it's not just talking about things that matter. It's supporting people who, if we help them, will actually go to Washington, D.C. and do something about the things that matter. Not later, right now. Thank you so much for the support that you have given me. Thank you so much for listening to me. Um, we can't take some long rest right now. We've got to keep going. We want a few inches on the path. We've got to keep going and win a whole lot more. Thank you so much.